start. Hello, everyone. Today, after several months of not seeing Thomas, we made this conversation happen, and I'm so happy to connect with Thomas Miller. Miller, Miller, Miller? That's right, yes. Um, who lives in the United Kingdom. And he, let's, let's start with this. Um, Thomas is a healer, Ayurvedic practitioner, a shaman, very, very spiritual being. And again, there is no coincidence that our paths has crossed because of JCK, um, yes. how this came together. But I want to start with this. Thomas, first of all, thank you for coming uh, back. My pleasure. A lot of people truly enjoyed our first conversation, but today no doggies, just the pyramid. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. But let's start with um, what's been happening in your life in the last few months, because I follow you on Instagram and also Thomas' Instagram will be down below. Uh, let's talk about this incredible place where you are, how all of this happened and what's unfolding from this. Wow, great. Um, where to start? Well, the decision came to move out of London that was very clear. And last time we spoke, I spent um, at my friend Sue's place. And my plan was I will be there for four weeks and I will make my way to Peru because I was planning to work with my shamanic teacher and to be there for two months, three months in Peru, come back towards the end of the year and then figure out where I want to live. So wow. uh, that was the plan, but obviously the universe had another plan. The plan was that, uh, my plan was to, to travel to Peru through Mexico because Mexico wasn't on the red list. So I could have entered Peru through Mexico. Cut the long story short, Mexico shut down, Peru shut down again. Mm -hmm. And you know my view, I'm not going to get this whole, I'm not going to buy into this whole drama. I had to take a decision, okay, I'm not going to go. I just, it was very difficult for me, but I'm not going to go. I'm not going to travel. And my partner, he came and visited me at Sue's place. I had this little tiny annex and I set it up beautifully. I thought I'm going to be here for a few months, unpacked some of my boxes, and then he contacted me on the day when he was on his way back to London. He said, oh, I just had to look at the internet and this beautiful place popped up. Wouldn't it be lovely if one day we will be living at, at a place like that? So that house came up for rent. The whole house? The whole place, yes. So um, the, the, the thing was that I didn't tell him that next day I went to the real estate agent. So he told me this on one day. And then the next day I happened to be in the village where the real estate agent was. I went into the agency and I said, I would like to have a look at the place. And this was completely, absolutely not planned. So he called me and said, where are you? I said, I'm just on my way to see the estate and I'm gonna go and have a look at the house that you sent me yesterday. And he said, are you crazy? Because interestingly is the rent for that place, the house here, which is a big five bedroom place and you will come to London soon. So you will come and visit us. I will do anything to get there. Okay, can I just jump in for a second guys? Okay, because those who, who follow me, they know I have this, like my soul is telling me the next step is like me in British countryside with like my beloved. And then one day I'm like, Thomas posts this picture on Instagram. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, this is exactly, and I'm like, heaven, heaven. This is so beautiful, Thomas. I'm sorry, I was just like so excited because it's stunning, that place. No, it is amazing. And we had to go through quite a lot of hurdles to actually get the place. But then we had to sit with um, how much do we want it? Do we really want yeah. it or... Is it just gonna some kind of flimsy idea? So basically, cut a long story short, less than three weeks later, we moved in. Three weeks? Less than three weeks Level later. Three. <gasps> so I actually had to pack my whole stuff again. So within two, within one month, 
I moved with my entire equipment twice. Right. So we got to this place. It's an old nunnery. So there were nuns living in this place before. Did you clean the walls? We cleaned, we cleansed the energy and we still, I still have to do some work up on the top floor. It's a ground floor, the first floor, and then the top floor where the other bedrooms are. Um, so we cleaned the space and we just really tidied it up and started to move things around, put stuff away. The place has been totally neglected. It felt empty. There was no soul in it. Yeah. And when we moved in, we felt immediately, oh my God, this is the place where we can actually be creative. Yes, I feel this energy, right? Like when you show it, I'm like, you're cooking. And I'm like, oh my yeah. God, those, those baking cakes you do, I'm like, yeah. so good. Yes. So, um, yeah, so that's how we basically ended so, up. Thomas, okay, that area, it's like south west. west. Of, right. So this is, is this Cornwall or is not Cornwall? It's just an hour from Cornwall. It's uh, in Devon, the coastal line of Devon between Totnes and Dartmouth, which is on the coastal line. Um, it's beautiful. We are not far away from the beach as well. And I wanted to be in nature and I'm definitely got, got the, the right place. But you know, when, you, when this move happened, mm -hmm. I went through a lot of doubt within myself and I can share this with you and your Please. audience. The doubt was, oh my God, I think you are just taking it a step too far. Yes, you have paid your rent for this and this because we had to pay six month rent in advance. When you are self-employed, you start from scratch. It doesn't matter how many years you have lived in a place, how regular you have been with your rent. All this whole drama with being caught in the system. Anyway, so and I'm, in my head was, oh my God, you're pretending to be someone who you are not. You don't really deserve this. This is so big. But then I had to really sit with it and said, why am I wanting to do this? I'm wanting to do this because first of all, needed to get out of London. I wanted to be able to expand my consciousness and to expand my energy field so I can be more creative yes. away from the city. Yes. And the night sky, when there are no clouds, it's unbelievable the sky at night. It's just, I mean, I feel so grateful every morning when we open the shutters, when I open the shutters and I say, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here and to, to live in this home. And I'm so happy for you, Thomas. I'm so yeah. happy for you. What I wanted to say here is there are many people that actually don't that and who envy us for us living our dreams and when we get our dreams especially with us that have a certain mindset i have got the tendency i feel guilty i feel almost guilty that i live there where there's so much other stuff going on so it's like this constant conflict how much do i deserve to live the lifestyle that i wish to live how much do i deserve to stand in my power and yeah. so and I think of course after a while it just sort of disappears but it comes up every now and then um, I guess especially at this point in time where everything goes even more haywise than when we spoke last time we are constantly being challenged to find out where do we stand in this whole picture what you is know, our viewpoint it where is, do we mm -hmm. see our but when you something really, I, I don't want to lose this because when you were saying this about not deserving this feeling of that arises, like of not deserving, not feeling worthy, like what came back to my mind is when I I was hearing Abraham Hicks because I listened to I used to listen to them a lot, and they were saying. <laughs> in this very like a uh, funny humorous way however the truth 
that that's what humanity get it wrong. You cannot get sick enough to help so sick people because yeah. it's the same like being poor. So how are you gonna help poor people or people in poverty? Not by being poor, by no. actually being prosperous and thriving. And it's isn't it? It's like it's so twisted. It's very twisted and the dichotomy of the whole thing is when I left London, I knew I leave my clientele behind and I have to start from scratch. Yeah. And then taking on a project like this, um, it's like it really pushes me out of my comfort zone in trusting, trusting that my focus is on creating the work and the money will flow. Mm -hmm. It will follow. Don't follow the money don't focus on the money create on your authentic work and let it all flow but of course this environment it just helps because each time you walk through the space you feel like oh my god i can breathe and it's just looking out in the field and it's just i feel deeply i feel very very grateful actually really grateful and i have this mindset about it i will share with you maybe you agree with this too because interestingly enough you pay up front so did i when i came back from poland i moved into new place and i had the same situation i had i actually offered because i knew that's the way for me with all those credits credit yeah. scores in us right so i i pay up front but not for six months for three months and the same thing with me as far as because i'm in the process of furnishing it nice and my my soul my higher self told me because i was like i don't want to spend money i should put in gold or silver or just you know don't spend money because who knows i might go back to europe i don't know for how long but then I heard this, Anya, buy only that furniture that you really love. And when you go, you will take it with you. I know it sounds to some people, oh, it's a waste of money, but I don't think like this because there's a certain energy and yes. story and yeah, and history. That's why when you people go and buy antiques, because there is the soul of the person around it, right? Yeah. Yes. So yes. yeah, it's interesting because, and another thing I want to say, since I follow you on Instagram too, and I was like, I've been experiencing the same thing, but in my case, it was not so much about move, but because of my father, that I was not in the place of creating. Like I, the last few months, there was no, I mean, on Instagram, yeah, because it's different, like travel, but creativity like this, and yes. now, like, I saw you moved and you're creating your healing programs now, which we will talk about. And then you are like those cooking videos I love. And I'm like, yeah, like you, you're like, it's like a new energy is coming. Yes, yes. And that's only because of leaving the old behind. And like you say, in a way, it's great because you start to refurnish. And yeah. I would totally agree. You know, when I moved to London, um, when I came back from New Zealand, I moved into the empty flat um, and I started again, I've started so many times from scratch. Me too. Started from scratch. I just slept on the floor. Me and too. I was very, very <laughs> determined that I will only buy the piece of furniture that I really love. I'm not going to compromise. If I don't get it, if the table doesn't have the right size that fits, I'm not gonna get it. I don't mind eating on the floor. That's fine. Like and I, I did it. I can't and believe every single, I <laughs> every single piece that I bought with that consciousness, I have brought into my flat. And my partner Dan said to me, I don't get it. How did you fit an entire country home in quotation mark in a one bedroom flat in London? in terms of the kitchen and the equipment, he said, it was as if you already bought the items knowing that you would move to this place in a couple of years time. This, oh my, Thomas, 
Okay, divine, this is divine timing for this conversation. Thomas, I literally still sleep on the floor. That's okay. Because, yeah. and you know what? I'm so fine like with this. And I tell you, because again, the same thing, only what I really want. Yes. And I'm not sure yet, like I like mattress, it's okay. I will get this mattress. But my point is like the bed, I know which bed, but I'm like not buying now because I might be traveling. I am the same way and very specific because I'm already thinking this desk. Okay, can I share this? This is so exciting. So yes, yesterday yes. I drove to Charleston. You, I don't know if you've ever been South Carolina. No. It's a beautiful city because it really reminds me of Europe. Like you have no idea. So it's like UK and France in one. Wow, wow. Stunning, like really for US. And I got myself a writer's desk, beautiful desk. I pick it up and I will assemble. But the top, it's so heavy that it's still in my car and I have nobody to help me now. So I have to find a person to bring it. But I'm when I'm buying, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to get this chair, like a leather chair, and it will look perfect in England. Yes, yes, yes. So your higher self is already ahead of you, like it is always. Our higher self is always ahead of us. And again, it comes back to what we say, trust. We had this conversation before we went live about how challenging it is to tell people what trust truly means. Yeah. Like, how can you explain somebody to trust if, if they can't trust, if they have never experienced what trust means? It is not something that comes that we can knit together. We can put the ingredients together that mm -hmm. make a cake instead of the cake, we make this trust. No, it's not <laughs> happening. And it is, a, it is really a very painful process sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we were talking about this into the, in the context of what goes on globally and especially in Austria at the moment. So, and this person was saying, oh, I'm going to move out of the UK. I will move to Mexico or this. I said, I don't know. I'm not going to move. I will trust. I just I, have to trust. We will be okay. I'm not going to give up. And we are protected. Yes. But yes. even this person is awake. I consider her awake. It's hard to, hard, hard to break the essence of yeah. what I really mean. Yeah. And I'm sure she, um, she, she understood, she completely understood where, where I was coming from. But if we are not careful, and I guess this is the energy of November in general, mm -hmm. so much light is coming in that the tiniest, darkest spots where the light are, is being shown on appear like big monsters. So in a sense, we have to be very aware and alert that we don't allow ourselves to be drawn right. to identify ourselves with those little spots that are just there, like this kind of marks that just memory of the past mm -hmm. or something that has been lurking within us and that we don't give it the weight that it actually is not. Do you know what I mean? Does it yes. make sense? Yeah, it does because like, in a very, let's say, blank white page, any tiny spot is so visible. So like the light is shining and it's not gray now, it's black and white. Exactly. There is exactly. no more gray. Gray became, gray either was reversed into white because they twisted white into gray or, yeah. right? or gray was shown as a true black. Yes. Yes. But you know how I feel? I didn't tell you before we started recording. Because now we, we were talking with Thomas uh, about situation in Europe, particularly, and how they are pushing this uh, subject again. And I had this very strong feeling, I didn't tell you, that this is the last chance for them to push it. Like, it's the last attempt. And it's like the desperation. And the, it's, a, it's like the like grand finale for them. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and you can feel it. It's like, you can really feel it that they try to do everything possible. Again, what saddens me is, and I guess this is because you were talking about empath before, 
this is where the empath comes in. I still can't believe, I mean, it just amazes me each time how many people are still buying fully into this whole situation. I mean, I just get, I just don't get it. But then at the same time, I'm not trying to get it. I don't need to get it. But it's that kind of push and pull and push and pull. It's like, okay, I'm being pulled in this direction, being pulled in that direction. How much do I stay in my center? Right. When as I am in my center, everything is fine. But we all have got good days and bad days. Sometimes we manage yeah. to get through those phases easily. And other times it takes a couple of hours and maybe a day where we allow ourselves being pulled into the fear, into the unknown and scarcity, and then we pull ourselves back out again. And that's okay. That's the beauty of it. And it is like, Maybe we need this, Thomas. Maybe we need exactly. this, like straightening the muscle, like strengthening, not straight, strengthening the muscle. Like we have to, like, it's actually getting stronger. Yes, and you brought the example of the colors of gray and black and white. What came to my mind is like, imagine you have got a calico cl colored cloth, like a cream colored cloth, and you want to dye it. What is your favorite color? Hmm. Do you have a favorite color? I actually, I love naturals, like cream, beige, soft colors like this. Okay. White. Any, any kind of white tissue, let's say any kind of pastel color, for example, or let's say in my case, to make it more clear with the analogy, blue, okay? So if you want to take the cloth, dip it into blue, you take the cloth out, is the cloth still the same color as it was before? No, it has taken on the color of blue, but what happens? The color blue will fade, mm -hmm. but the more we dive in, mm -hmm. the stronger the color will remain. Even the strongest sunlight will not fade that color anymore. In a way, even the darkest of energies will not have that grip as, on us anymore the more we dive in and we come out. It's repetition. We lose a little bit of that and then we dive in again. So, right. so that's the process of but, what's happening. Wow, okay, so now like I'm seeing this like totally, this is so good. But then we're gonna ultimately reach this point when there is no, no more point of coloring it. It's already established. Exactly, exactly, yes, yes. That's so good. So we just keep on making this like the color. We just have to keep on marching and holding the torch high and just the, the essence really is to just humbly stand in our truth. Yes. And if there's anything that sort of I wish for myself, I, I'm talking about myself that whatever happens that I will remain true to myself, yes. that I will never forget where I came from and that I will keep as much as possible sticking to the truth, but in a way that is humble. I don't know how else to say it. I just, um, because there's a lot of danger when we become visible, when we become seen that we lose that kind of naturalness, that kind of humbleness in our being. And we try to portray and to be someone. It's filtered. Yeah. Not. And that feeds it back again to my conversation at the beginning. Are you pretending to be someone else or are you still the same person? And if I look at it, no, I'm completely the same person. I'm probably even more myself that I have ever, ever been. And as long as we understand that, as long as we come back to that aspect, everything else will fall into place. The universe has its plan. As long as we are open to allow our soul purpose to show in our life to its fullest. It's just that intention is enough. We don't need to figure out the plan and the details. Like Anya, you don't need to figure out how you get 
from your current flood to the UK. You're moving in that direction. Energetically, you know, this is the next big step that is there for you already. And then it's about, okay, the details mm -hmm. will be sorted. So amazing how you're verbalizing um, my, well, ver verbalizing my inner knowing, that's one, but also how, how there is like, we are the mirrors to one another and I see and I hear, I feel the similarities, even though we have completely different journeys, the similarities and understanding is not just, because people can see sometimes, oh yeah, I do too, I do too, I do too. But do you really, because it's a different level of, um, com not comparing, but kind of comparing, but a different level of really understanding. Yes. Like yes. really understanding and the trust you talk about it's something that I literally know that I am, that's why I am so unleashed with the intuition right now, because I do readings too for people. And I, I just trust, like something comes, like message, picture, and I know. And it's with me, my life is my own, like a te test, I don't like it, but like a testing ground, like a practicing place. So I trust and I feel in advance because like you say, you're my higher self, <laughs> it's already there. It's exactly the same way. And you said this, Thomas, so important that we are protected. You, you have no idea how on point is this. When I was traveling to Poland, I had exactly this moments like, uh, what, uh, uh, they want you to do this, da, 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 da. And then I said, enough, I just trust the right people will show up. And the way back to US, if I can tell you the return was an absolute joke. Literally, literally, no one even asked me if I had the experience, not even one person. And the only person that checked my test was in Frankfurt airport. That was the connecting flight to US. And that's about it. I'm like, nothing. And I landed, that's it. Yes, yes. But then, I wanted, yeah. yes, go ahead. But then but there are people who enter and they go through all these hardships. And I'm like, this is the frequency. It really all comes down. And you cannot fake it. That's the point. You cannot fake it. No. That's, that's a very good point because you said something and that triggered the thought. Um, Let's be honest, okay? I believe everyone who, or anybody who pretends they have figured it all out, we know that it's never gonna work. We are all on the journey and the journey continues. We are, might be on a different path, but in a way the destination, we are all heading in the same direction. And I, especially I feel as a healer, and health professional, it is my duty, my responsibility to do whatever needs to be done to clear my own stuff, yes. go through my own fears, my own insecurities, all those patterns that we carry. I cannot expect that to happen with my patients if I don't take that course. And this is why over the past 35 years, my journey has really been a journey. Yeah. Yes, in essence, I'm still an Ayurvedic practitioner and Ayurveda is my main qualification. But as part of my process of growing and expanding on the level of consciousness, there are experiences that are helpful that I can share. And I'm right. sure it is the same for you. Yes. I guess what I'm trying to say is, as practitioners, professionals, we have the responsibility to our higher self, to the people around us, not to shy away from clearing the baggage that we carry. Because that baggage is actually a gift to understand and to 
how can you help people? Like if you walked in their shoes, that's how you help. Yes, yes. Because you have a point of reference, right? You have a point of reference. You know for you what that meant. So very much likely you will attract the person who has not overcome that, worked through that yet, but there you are, you've been on the other side. Yeah. You come with this, this is it. Like for you, it looks like this. And it, of course the universe brings you the, the client who needs exactly what you already know. Exactly. And again, that's an element that trust comes back. So we have to trust that the right people come into our lives at the right moment in time. And I guess to conclude on that thought, um, we have moved away from the, the time of gurus is over, to be quite yes. honest. It's time that we start to really rely on ourselves and mm -hmm. dig deep within ourselves and allow space. No transformation can happen without space. If you don't give ourselves the space to change, but we want to change, we are still stick, stuck in our own patterns. Yeah. How's this gonna work? Yeah. Space is required for change to occur. When I mean space, create space internally, create space externally, clear your clutter. Interesting thing is the first thing that I uh, did when I moved into this place, I said, we have to clear the entrance. The entrance has to be clean, clear, polished, take out the shoes, no shoes in the entrance hall, clean the door, get some scent in, because this is where the pranic life force comes in. This is where abundance comes in from a, uh, my limited understanding of Vedic architecture. It's important to have the entrance clean, clear, beautiful. Um, and at the same time, that space internally, the space outside, as soon as we create that space, change will happen naturally. But a lot of the time, a lot of people I come across, is, uh, come across, they wish to change. Yeah, I want to do this. I know I can do this, but I actually don't make space for change. Yes. When I mean space, I don't mean push people out of their lives, but allow yourself to go out in nature, allow yourself to sit in meditation, just sit in silence, sit in that silence and allow the energy to expand the space to grow. So you get creative ideas, you get the inspiration and the inner knowing this is the next step yeah. that we need to do. And you know, it's amazing again, because I love Feng Shui, by the way. Um, but when I moved here, when I took all the boxes, when I was in Poland, I had all my stuff, not much, but stored in the boxes in my friend's house. So I came to this apartment and Thomas, I'm telling you, especially yesterday, when I was dressing up to go to drive to Charleston, I look at the clothes I have and I have a quite a lot and nice clothing, right? And more than 50%, that is not me anymore. Yeah. I feel so ready to transform even um, the, like image wise, okay? So like classic and timeless. And again, but because this really almost like, not almost, it does represent like this British country style look, but I love that look, but there is like a, simplicity and understatement in this and like a flow i feel like a flow of energy is not because clothing is important too it can be very limiting yes you know right like they always say when you meditate wear comfortable clothing of course because you don't want an uncomfortable sensation on your body that your focus goes like on your belt yes yes <laughs> yes yes, yes. Yes. It's amazing. This, this, and it's almost like there's no going back right now. I feel like it's no turning back. Like you, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. You gotta clean this, this stuff. Let go of old, let go of old. Yes. Yes. And then in that process, we also need to allow ourselves that 
some stuff might go easy. We might be able to let go more easy, but other things, we may need to turn them around on the clothes rack for a couple of times before we are able to put it into the recycle bin. Um, and that's also okay. So I think if we take the pressure off of trying to be perfect, yeah. and we just really look at what is it that I require at this particular moment in time, and ask that question, I need a glass of water, basic needs. I may need some rest, I may need some space. I may need to do this or that, but pause, become aware. And in that process of becoming aware, we start to slowly unravel the mystery that makes the tapestry of our being, basically. So it's about creating that awareness and then seeing what is beneath it yes. and then sometimes we can act faster i guess what i'm trying to say is whatever happens wherever we are whatever we do it's just perfect it is yes. the way of how it is supposed to be yes it's it's so it's so beautiful when you were saying this now another um, realization came that what we are ultimately for me I see are doing we are returning to our own individual life force to the life force it's like the light the, the, the fire in us the light force that we tend to believe was everywhere else whatever it was represented. Oh, we got the energy from this. Oh, we got this from this. This, 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 this. All those outside symbols. Um, like for example, if I can make sense of it, like explaining what I really mean. So here we have Thomas and Thomas moved into this incredible place. So if he would move in there and say, now this house is going to give me like the life force. And then he's in it and nothing is happening. It's like, where is the life force? Where is the life force? Okay, it's beautiful. But then this beauty is fading away. The same like with relationships, right? Okay, yeah. that's one, one scenario. But another is like, here is Thomas ready, aligned, knowing that he will be guided to the next place and he will resonate with this energy because his life force and the life force from this place combined is like yes. and then he moves in that's it yes yes yeah that's exactly what that's exactly what i experience and exactly what what has happened really in this in this whole process so yeah what I would be interesting is, so what is what do what is your daily alignment protocol like? Mine? Yes. What if you don't mind sharing with me? I don't I, mind because it's actually has been very shaken and disturbed mm. in the last few months because I pretty much um gave all my attention and my energy to my father mm -hmm. and like i pulled myself out of me and when i came back to us i could not find myself at all i i felt lost yesterday was the very first day when i felt the strong connection with God to the point I was driving listening to the music and I was just crying like I was and I'm just I was going there and crying and the future images which exist already were coming and, but you ask me and I tell you for me something that I do every day no matter what and this might sound strange to some people because people say oh when you meditate you don't do anything I have a very different ceremony in the morning when I wake up 
I do some stretching always, kind of like yoga, a few poses. And then I make myself coffee. And this is yes. every morning, every morning. And I stopped like, good for you, not good for you. Well, thank you for coffee. I'm grateful. So I make this yes. coffee. Then I sit down in the lotus pose. I sit down, close my eyes. And it's a form of... I'm drinking coffee and I'm sitting like this and I'm relaxing in it. And it depends on the morning. Sometimes I get um, directions. Sometimes I get inspiration. Sometimes I see or I hear what I'm supposed to hear or sometimes I'm envisioning my next or ultimate steps ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after this, I get up, brush my teeth, wash my face, put my um, clothing to go out and I take a walk because I'm so blessed where I live with this area. So I walked and I look at the trees, I talk to the trees, I walk a long distance, I come back and then I do whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's that's another key thing. It's the anchor. The anchor is how do we start today? And I personally have got my meditation practice. I work with sacred mapacho every morning and going through a 45 one hour ritual pretty much every morning. And then there are those mornings when I allow myself get, to get distracted. Mm -hmm. And then I, it gets to 12 o'clock, one o'clock. I'm thinking, why are you so completely, <laughs> just totally disaligned? And I'm thinking, oh, of course, because I started my day yeah. in not the usual way. And there are two sides to this. That will help us teach to be flexible yeah. because like you said, you had to go pull yourself out of your environment, go and work with your father, be with your father, and then come back. So in a way, sometimes this is what it is. We just have to learn to be flexible, but at the same time, know what is it that calms me down, gets me back into alignment most rapidly. Yes. So Yes. Anybody who is really taking the path of growth and expansion serious should really think about what is that thing that gets me instantly into alignment. And that's the practice that somehow we should stick to, although there is no such thing as should. Right. Would be to stick to, especially in this time, because what I'm saying here again is that the cage is going to be rattled even more and even more and even more until the tiniest little dot is just polished away and we are able to reflect the essence of who we are, which is in principle light, frequency, energy of its highest chord. But Thomas, when you were saying this, another thing, when I was in Poland, I I've been coming to this point for a long time, but you know, I reconnected with Europe, right? With the spirit, with the architecture, with history, with, with that energy. And because it's in, it's in me. And I came back and I said, you know what? I have to start those like travel vlogs videos. I have to because I love it. Like, I love this on Instagram. You know you follow me. I love it. I feel like I'm actually showing people the world through my eyes, and some of them might never have been there or might never be, but they feel like they are with me on this tour. Journey, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I said yesterday was the first time I posted this, like a very uh, immature recording video, right? And I was actually trying to put music because I, I also am very sensitive. Like I know what music would be good. So I found perfect music, but then I realized I don't know how to cut the music only for those parts where I'm not talking. So I'm like, whatever. 
but it's not whatever, but I'm like, okay, make peace, send it out. But what I'm trying to say is this, even in that moment when I was like out of me and helping my father and all of it, there were many, I was doing the coffee in the morning, but there were many other gifts that came from this. So like this moment when we are pulled out of our ways, it's like universe is actually doing this to stir up something I felt like the old stuff, like certain people I was talking to, I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't, I can't, yeah. I pretty yes. much can't. Yes. It's against myself now. I like, you have to move, you have to go with this stream. You gotta go. Yes, yes. And that means that I, I would describe it as being in alignment with nature, being alignment with the rhythm of life. Yeah. I think there's uh, one thing, routine versus rhythm, rhythm versus mm -hmm. routine. Mm. Routine is something we get stuck in, we become fanatic, we start to become rigid, yeah. okay? Like this. Whereas rhythm is something that flows naturally. Yeah. And it is for us really to move towards finding a rhythm in our life rather than being stuck in a routine, in a set routine. And especially from an Ayurvedic perspective, those who are more inclined to a Pitta personality, they are very, we have got, I say we because my personality is pretty much Pitta. We can get quite rigid in our thinking. This is how it has to be. Routine, boom, 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 boom. Tick the boxes, okay? But in those ticking of the boxes, we may actually miss the nuances of it. We miss quite a lot. But if we find a rhythm, if we dance to the rhythm of nature, that's when the beauty can unfold. And we have got something that we can fall back on. That's where the two things somehow come together. Rhythm, routine, it gives us a backbone to fall back on. But one, the routine is like a, a dry stick, like a dry branch of a tree, which is very rigid. Whereas a rhythm is still strong, but it flows with There's the wind. There's a movement. The, yeah. the, the routine, breaks, the stick breaks, boom, that's it. We fall apart, we lose everything. In a sense, all our so good, true. So true. All the, the good habits that we yeah. thought, the good behavior that we put on, because mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. part of the, the outside life force. Exactly. So, but if you are dancing with the rhythm of nature, it's so beautiful and that's what you have done. And then we see there's so much more that we wouldn't have seen if we would have stayed in our patterns. Yeah. That means taking risks. Yes, yes, and yes. Not being afraid of stepping out of the norm. Yes, Thomas, exactly. So, so on point. And like, there's this element of surprise. And I think that's another thing. I don't know if you, you will agree with this, but it's interesting. I think we might, we might align on this too. There was this whole time that people were all of a sudden coming to what is visualization, right? So you vis yes. so you envision your future and you do either vision board or you meditate or you intention, but that intention became like that stick and that yes. vision became like that stick. But what if, and I, I, I've been there, I was so caught up in it, like, it's got, and I was manifesting like crazy because I'm a really good manifester, but it was still like, what? Nah, eh, like, no, 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 not this, need to be this, like this, like this. And then I came to this point. I said, you know what, now I already put it out a million times. Trust, let it be better because my brain can only envision what it had experienced unless I receive a download. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's when it, if I look at the space here, I, I wouldn't have, I couldn't have orchestrated it. It was like the timing, the way of how things went. That's when we open ourselves up to that experience. And you brought about visualization. Um, I never believe in positive thinking. 
I know I may step on tricky ground here because if the positive thinking is only on one level, we are just pulling in two different levels. It's like trying to do the split without any exercise. Um, it has to be, first of all, realizing where we are right now. It's the observing state. Mm -hmm. I observe myself feeling stressed, anxious, whatever it is, and then use the breath to shift from the state of anxiety, fear, anger, mm -hmm. to a more neutral space where we experience the space, where we experience some neutrality, where we are able to be comfortable with the anger, frustration, fear, anxiety. Then we can shift that. But if we don't do that step of getting into a neutral space, yeah. positive thinking it's is like, like this. It's like this. Yeah, it, positive thinking is like, pretending the sunshine when it rains. In fact, it rains, so so what? And we have to accept the rain to move through the change so we can actually see the cloud, uh, see the sun, you know what I mean? There is a gift in this, um, the other side of positivity. Not only it highlights the, it highlights the other side, it actually, because of that, both exist right they could it's not the exist they could not exist with like one cannot exist without the other we are talking about duality and non-duality actually so it's like as soon as we define something as positivity we give birth to negativity so it's really redirecting the focus so do you think this is interesting because now it came to my mind this question. Do you think that we are experiencing the negative, which has this connotation like it's bad, which actually is the biggest gift? All those challenges yes. are the gifts for something new to be born, right? But do yes. you think we're feeling those things because we stay longer focus on them a hundred percent a hundred million percent because i can say that having moved out of london i have no clue what goes on in this country seriously mm -hmm. i no longer walk around in central london where i see the headlines constantly flashing. being bombarded flashing i don't see it anymore i don't have a tv although when we moved into this place there were eight believe it or not <gasps> eight TVs in different rooms. We put them all into storeroom. So I have no idea. So in a sense, because I don't put my attention to it, I realize it is there, but my focus is there. Yep. It's, it's, it's natural law. It's, it's wherever our attention goes, this is what grows. So if you put our attention on those if, buts, how, when, whys, then of course we will lose ourselves. And then again, we will lose ourselves in the spiral, the In the mind control, spiral. right, Thomas? In the mind control. Yes. So, so whereas we pull ourselves back, yeah. trying to filter through what does true truth mean for me at this point in time? Yes. And it's difficult. I'm not saying it's an easy process. Distraction happens everywhere. You have family members that are totally split, whatever it is. Yes. So, but it's like, again, the more we take the color, the cloth, we dip it in the color, we take it out into day-to-day -day life. We go shopping, we get upset because people still, whatever, wear this bloody thing in front of their mouth, excuse me, then you get upset, you just neutralize it, come back. So you start to develop through this process, compassion. Compassion with others, compassion with yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the compassion is what helps us through, what, what guides us to the next step in that moment in time when we really look at 
connecting with what is required at that particular moment for me. Yes. Which is totally different from you, totally different from anybody else. And this is why it's dangerous to follow people. I agree. To follow, I agree. follow dogmas, teachings. Yes. Or believe blindly in other people's vision of the future or whatever it is. That's yes. how I see it. And you know, almost I feel another thing, Thomas, that for me personally, when I am not triggered by other people's choices, I almost feel as if I'm like, I know it sounds strange, but I'm like invisible because my frequency is so different. I'm just kind of like going through. Absolutely, 100%, yes, yes. So before we end this today, because I could talk forever and I really enjoy reconnecting with you very much today. It's a, again, no surprise, perfect timing. Thank you, Anya. How people can um, connect with you and participate in those events that you're doing on the internet right now, those healing um it's weekly, right? On Saturdays. Can you explain yes, the process? I'm doing, at the moment, I've started a five body alchemy healing series, which is looking at the five elements of earth, water, fire, air, and space, and its correct connection to the five bodies, like your physical, emotional, energetic, mental, and spiritual body. And all of those are linked to the five senses at the same time. So when we talk about perfect well-being is aligning all those five bodies with the highest version of yourself. Mm. And mm. in this process, we are, I'm using mantras, I'm sharing mudras, which is particular positions of the fingers yeah. that are linked to the elements. So for example, how can, can I get quickly in touch with my emotional body, aligning my emotional body when I'm upset perhaps use the water man, uh, mudra, which is connecting the pinky with the tip of your thumb and sit with it, which will help aligning your emotional body. So I'm doing a five week series and this is a live event. You can purchase the tickets through my website, but then also I have a high quality recording specifically of the meditation and the drumming and the chanting, because it's almost like I get into a trance state and then the vocals that come through help to align this particular energetic body or physical body that we work on mm -hmm. through light code activation um, that basically comes through. So. Recordings are available on my Patreon account, but the live event is happening at the moment every Saturday at uh, 6 p.m. UK time uh, in the evening. So yeah. these are... Okay. So I'm going to attach this um, down below. And if someone oh, wants to have a one-on-one -on -one session with you, um, do you do this as well, Thomas? I definitely do. And... But the easiest way is to book a free 15 minute session. So we will try to connect with each other, okay. try to see what is required and to figure out if people are resonating with my approach and then we can take it from there for the individual work. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I feel like I already want to connect with you again. <laughs> we definitely will. I can't wait until you have landed back again in the UK. And this time make a little bit more time and then maybe pop over. It's only a couple of hours on the train from London to visit. Thank you. Yes, I will definitely. I feel like that's what I should do. And it's in a few weeks from now, actually. Oh, wow. Few weeks from now. So it's on my list. Thank you so much, Thomas. Lots of Thanks love. You. I really appreciate. And I really hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>